Are you ready to learn ways to reduce your sensitivity and expand your window of tolerance? Welcome back to Savvy Psychologist. I'm your host, Dr. Monica Johnson. Every week on this show, I'll help you face life's challenges with evidence-based approaches, a sympathetic ear, and zero judgment. After listening to last week's episode, I'm hoping you spend some time thinking about whether you are more hyper or hypo aroused and how narrow your window of tolerance may be. In this episode, we'll focus on ways to expand your window of tolerance so that you can be engaged in life instead of triggered by it. In order to reach this goal, we must first find the middle path between safety and novelty. These are two human needs that require the right balance in order for our window of tolerance to expand and be sufficient for us to engage in life in rewarding ways. Let's first define safety. Safety is our need for predictability, protection, relaxation, security, and connectedness to others. We also have a natural need for novelty. This is our thrill-seeking side that craves unpredictability, risk, and excitement. We want to encounter things that are different from our norm to shake it up and keep life interesting. Like most things in life, when we have too much or too little of something, it doesn't bode well for us. When a person tries to avoid risk at all times to maximize safety, it prevents them from growing. Most growth requires a bit of friction, thus the adage, no pain, no gain. Healthy risks are necessary for a healthy life. Negative self-talk can lead us to react poorly to healthy challenges and changes or inhibit us from taking risks. For example, thoughts like, I don't deserve success, or I'm not allowed to make any mistakes, and if I try, I know I'll fail, are examples of negative self-talk that can prevent us from growing. On the other hand, when someone craves too much novelty, it can lead them to engage in impulsive risks. Impulsive risks often lead to unintended negative consequences. Examples of impulsive risks may include overspending, substance abuse, and dropping personal or social responsibilities to the detriment of those relationships. Broadly speaking, to expand your window of tolerance, you must seek a middle path between safety and novelty. You can begin to do this by practicing taking appropriate risks and being open to new experiences. A risk is considered healthy if you've considered the potential consequences of the activity from your wise mind. In doing so, you can expand your window of tolerance gradually over time and use coping strategies to cope with unpleasant emotions or sensations related to trying a new activity. When approaching a new situation, be mindfully aware of any avoidance patterns that show up. Oftentimes, we will come up with excuses for why the risk is too much. This is our emotional mind kicking in and encouraging us to engage in familiar patterns. Familiarity will always feel good in the short term but you will find that you become increasingly frustrated in the long term as you won't see yourself improve. It is important to act opposite to these emotional urges and to move forward with the novel situation. Remind yourself that it is normal to experience anxiety when you're trying something for the first time and are uncertain of the outcome. The emotions you're experiencing are linked to your hyper or hypo aroused state. If you act on the urges associated with these states, it may actually make your window of tolerance more narrow when what you want to do is widen it. A recurring theme in my podcast episodes is to understand your why. This is especially important when trying to expand your window of tolerance. There will be moments where it will feel easier to give in to your hyper or hypo arousal, so you want to remember why you're putting yourself in discomfort. 
I'm going to help you out by letting you know some of the benefits of taking healthy risks. When you expand your window of tolerance, it allows you to experience and effectively cope with a wide range of emotions, both positive and negative. This is fantastic because it allows you to have emotions like elation and joy while simultaneously being able to deal with low emotions like despair, boredom, and anger without acting out. Many find that when they can approach life with less fear and avoidance, they bring more color to their lives. They can strike a balance between the routines that we need to support our daily grind and the novelty needed to be inspired and have fun in life. Additionally, if we approach previously neglected areas of our lives or work on improving skill deficits, we can expand our capabilities both professionally and personally. Have you been wanting to switch careers, but are talking yourself out of taking those coding classes? Or have you been wanting to take up a new hobby like scuba diving, but are avoiding the lessons? See how these types of behaviors can limit our potential? The beauty of this process is that mistakes will happen. And when you recover from those mistakes, you can grow as a person and trust in your abilities to recuperate even when things don't go as planned. I am a fan of bar classes. And one of the things they often say is embrace the shake. One of the ways you build muscle endurance is through pushing yourself to the limit and holding on a bit longer than you thought you could. In that vein, embrace the mistakes. A small failure here or there could be what you need to get to the finish line. What is something you've been avoiding that you want to give a try? Let me know on Instagram at kindmindpsych. You can also reach me via email at psychologist at quickanddirtytips.com or leave a voicemail at 929-256-2191. The Savvy Psychologist is a Quick and Dirty Tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Steve Rickyberg with script editing by Adam Cecil. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our assistant manager is Emily Miller. And our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. Follow Savvy Psychologist on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's all for this episode of Savvy Psychologist. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.